The skies of the world are filled with aircraft of every description. There are long-range bombers flying thousands of miles to strike at the heart of the enemy, and speedy interceptors to prevent enemy aircraft from penetrating our outer defenses. There are tremendous transports carrying vital supplies to our allies and our own fighting men. Fast fighters to take out enemy interference during the battles for air supremacy. And there are the eyes of the ground units, the rapid reconnaissance aircraft. No matter what type aircraft it is, each one is the most modern available, designed to do its job better than any other airplane. But in order to get top-notch performance out of these airplanes, the pilot must know the condition of each operating part. Give him this information. There are instruments handily grouped on panel boards in front of him. Each dial gives a bit of information that is vital to flight performance and safety. To a good pilot who knows his instruments, these bits of information all add up to a complete picture of what goes on. Regardless of the number installed, there is not one in excess, and not one that the pilot would willingly do without. For every engine, there are gauges to report such things as the manifold pressure, the number of revolutions per minute, and the cylinder head temperature. During flight, these instruments are always on the alert to warn of impending trouble. Number two's running hot. Better crack those cowl flaps. And when a movable part, such as a cooler flap, is adjusted, there usually is an indicator which shows its position. There are additional engine instruments to judge such important things as the fuel pressure, the oil pressure, and the oil temperature. The problems of flight and navigation clearly demand a group of instruments to tell the pilot everything he must know about the attitude and flight path of the airplane he controls. To measure the height above the ground, or at least above sea level, there is the altimeter, amazingly accurate even at 8,000 feet. We're flying at 8,000. What's the highest anthill around here? About 7,000. You better take her up to 10. Your heading should be 265 magnetic. 10,000, 265, roger. The compass shows the direction of heading. To aid the pilot in keeping his maneuvers within the safety limits of his airplane, there is the rate of climb indicator, which gives the speed of ascent or descent. Performance during maneuvers, particularly slipping or skidding, is noted by the bank and turn indicator. Accurate measurement of forward speed through the air one of the basic flight requirements is reported by the airspeed indicator. Many aircraft will also have a flight indicator, and often the group of instruments comprising the automatic pilot. Suction and pressure gauges are also necessary. Other instruments indicate the position and condition of important accessories, such as retractable landing gear and adjustable flaps. The de-icing system gauge and the outside air temperature thermometer naturally are placed next to each other. Also provided is a good clock. But the pilot is not the only crew member with instruments to check in an airplane of this size. The navigator has at his disposal such instruments as the aperiodic compass, the drift meter, and his own set of flight instruments, including particularly an altimeter and an airspeed indicator. With the aid of all these, the navigator can take the bearings and measurements required to plot the proper course. Just about there, 12 more minutes. Say, Mike, you ready to lay your eggs? We'll be over in about 12 minutes at 10,000. Airspeed, 260. I'm all set. The accuracy of the airspeed indicator and the altimeter is particularly important to bombing. These instruments for the bombardier, the navigator, and the pilot represent the nerve system of the airplane, helping each crew member to carry out his many duties necessary during flight and for the successful completion of any mission. 
Instruments are required for every airplane, but the number and type of instruments are determined by the information needed. Thus, the panel installations will differ according to the type of airplane. Because they have no engine, gliders have the simplest installation and require only basic flight and navigation instruments. The usual glider panel contains an airspeed indicator to give the speed of flight, a compass to give the direction of flight, and an altimeter to give the height above the ground. Primary training aircraft, like gliders, have a minimum of navigation instruments. But there is added an engine gauge unit, a tachometer, a manifold pressure gauge, and a clock. Advanced trainers have many more instruments, mainly because they must perform through a greater operational range, involving the use of considerable navigation installations. Long-range, multimotored aircraft have the maximum number of instruments because they have the greatest number of operating parts, have the most personnel, and go farther and stay up longer. Their panels include all the navigation instruments required for long-range hops, plus a complete set of engine instruments, even though each indicator gives the required information for two engines, thus cutting the number of dials in half, the panel still makes quite a display. To protect the delicate mechanisms of aircraft instruments, their panels are cushioned on shock-absorbing mounts. Their locations may vary according to the type of panel and airplane, but always they are used in pairs to provide free motion in all directions. To ensure further the accurate and dependable operation of every instrument, and to help guard against potential failure in any of them, aircraft instruments must be built and serviced by specialists, skilled in handling their delicate mechanisms, and trained to make certain that each functions according to plan, design, and specification. After extreme precision assembly come the many and varied tests which determine whether the instruments will withstand the stresses and strains unavoidable under many flight conditions. Nothing can be left to chance when so much may depend on it. Every type of aircraft instrument must undergo its own special brand of test in order to determine its fitness. And you'll find the special high precision equipment required for these tests in every Air Force's instrument shop. But extreme care in assembly and repair, fine workmanship, close tolerances, and precision are not enough. These instruments will give dependable service only if they're handled carefully at all times. When they're out of their cases and the delicate wheels and bearings are staring you in the face, it's nearly impossible to make the mistake of treating them roughly. But even after the instruments are encased, and although the case looks plenty strong, the same rule holds true. Handle firmly, but carefully. After a rigid final inspection covering both operation and appearance, the instrument must be approved by the inspector. When ready for shipping or storage, the instruments must be packed correctly. This means using tissue paper, strips of corrugated paper, and packing felt to hold the instruments snugly and to prevent their movement within the boxes. Excelsior is never used for this purpose. Finally, the all-important label with its complete information on the instrument inside. When being unpacked, and especially when out of packing cases, instruments must be handled with extreme care. Always place them down gently on workbenches or on any hard surface. Aircraft instruments, with a few special exceptions, are built to fit into one of two standard size cases. The smaller case is one and seven-eighths inches in diameter. The larger case is two and three-quarter inches in diameter. This standardization permits the holes in the panel to be either of these two standard sizes simplifying replacement of defective instruments. 
This also makes more trouble-free the redesigning of an entire panel layout, just so long as these two standard size holes are provided. Inspection and maintenance procedures are standardized also, because only careful and conscientious attention at the specified regular intervals will keep the instruments in dependable working order. Always be thorough and methodical when servicing instruments. Every cover glass must be clean, every setting correct, every reading accurate. Make sure you do the job right. Remember always that much may depend on the instruments you inspected or serviced and approved for use. But whether you're the crew chief who checks the instruments or the instrument mechanic who repairs them, the important point to remember is that every instrument must be in good working order to ensure the lives of those men the safety of that airplane from takeoff until return, and the success of their mission. <laughs>